Hello Galaxy, I'm Chris Perillo, and I wanted to talk a bit about the iPhone 10. iPhone 10. The iPhone with an X after it. It's it's 10. We gotta do the whole X being 10 thing all over again. Okay, that's not the reason I wanted to talk to you today, necessarily. Um, I believe, based upon what was presented yesterday, that uh, the iPhone 10 UI, user interface, coupled with the iPhone 10 UX, or user experience, two different things. Uh, the iPhone 10, because of these two things, and because of uh, how Apple approached certain uh, shortcomings, is a dumpster fire. It's a disaster. Have I used one? No. Have I seen one? Oh yeah, I I've seen it just like every one of you may have seen it. I, I haven't ever sipped piss, but I can tell you I wouldn't want it. I don't need to have had that to tell you that's not a good idea. I have a few notes. And when I say a few copious notes that I've been jotting down over the past hour after uh, ruminating on this for the past day or so, some people are able to make decisions more quickly. And, and, and sometimes I can as well, but this one... Uh, <laughs> this, this one is not surprising. Uh, you know, I, I, I consider myself somewhat of an outsider. I know some people would believe I'm an insider. Yes, I have been talking about software and to a certain degree hardware over the past 20 years. Some people still want to listen to my opinion in relation to tech. I don't know why. I tend to tell the truth or I tend to be honest at least with myself and convey that honesty. Some people don't like that. They, they want to know what you think, but they really don't want to know what you think. They want you to validate what they think, but I'm really not into that. So I have some degree of experience in talking about software's failings and, and how not every bit of hardware is an amazing choice. And I realize this is going to be a shock to many people because, you know, if you tune into technology as a destination, which I do not do, I believe technology is an enabler, not a destination. I've long believed that. I've, I've long said that. Uh, you may only heard of the good things and the amazing things about the iPhone 10. Oh, it's a breakthrough. It's amazing. You have to have it. And it's, it's awesome and it's the future because Apple says it's the future. And I'm telling you, if what they presented is the future, I've never wanted to live in the past so much. And it's not because I've reveled in what we have today because technology always evolves. It always changes. It's not a religion. Right? Right? Tell me. For you, it's not a religion. I have no allegiance to any company or any product. I'm me. And all I have is, is my experiences and also perspectives of, of people who uh, see things differently and have a, a, a completely different background than I do. And, and just about every single person that I trust in the field of design, uh, in, in the field of uh, 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 specifically a user interaction with technology, uh, they're kind of with me on this. So I, I'm not really listening to the tech media or the so-called techies about this who, who seem to fall over themselves anytime a new product's released, and it's amazing, but it really isn't. So I've got a few notes that I'm going to be referring to. Why? Am I so upset? Why am I so passionate? Dude, I've always been passionate about things that I care about. So what you're hearing is that I actually care. Not that I'm ambivalent. That, that's, that's something that would lead me to not even bother talking about it, not even getting passionate about it. Why am I passionate? Why do I care? Because I've lost the apple that I admired. The day that Steve Jobs died, I recorded a video. In fact, I streamed it live. And I remember saying, and I'm paraphrasing myself, this was a few years ago, that I don't think Apple will be in trouble if it sticks to its ethos, if it sticks to its, its core principles, if design stays at the center of their mission. And what was so aggravating yesterday, and, I, and this even leaked out when uh, I, I streamed uh, my commentary uh, under the the Apple announcements or the, the keynote yesterday, which I'm prone to do. I've done that for years as well. Uh, I, it wasn't... A, it wasn't... It wasn't sitting right with me. 
for a few different reasons. Because what they were saying about Steve Jobs, I, I think was honorable. I'm not suggesting that it was disingenuous at all. In fact, I think it was absolutely genuine. But what they were saying and how they were, re how they were revering Steve seemed to be a disconnect from how they've been operating ever since uh, he, he died. And this is not a card I play all that often. I, it's not that, you know, something bad happens, you know, with Apple or something I, I don't like happens and then I say, well, this wouldn't have happened if Steve Jobs died because honestly that trope has been overplayed. I, I, I'm, I'm even cautious about saying it now because I, I think it, it's a deeper problem uh, than, than just that. Uh, but the Apple that, that ultimately pulled me in had an eye for, for, for detail that matched mine. And mind you, you know, I, 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 my history has been littered with calling the ball correctly, might I add, on certain platforms, not developed by uh, Apple. Um, that didn't necessarily help improve the problem, but I still felt that I owed it to the people who still do trust what it is that I say, because I am so brutally honest, um, to, to tell them the truth. I thought Windows Vista was going to be a disaster. I said so. I thought Windows 8 was going to be a disaster. I said so. Some people, for years, for years I got blamed for Windows Vista's failings. Years! I had nothing to do with it. Literally nothing to do with it. I, I lost a lot of support because I refused to validate somebody else's feelings. This isn't a, it's not a, a team game, go team go. It's, it's a series of technologies that d deserves to be better. And the Apple I once admired is, uh, it's a memory. And I've, I've felt this for, for so long, but I think the challenge now, as opposed to the challenge when I first recognized Apple as finally putting something together that I believed was going to work well, and it, and it did for a number of years. And it, it, that's the problem is I don't think there's an, a viable alternative. Um, and, and I know I'll get to this point in a bit, but it seems organic to, to, to talk about it now. It's not just about one device. It's not just about one platform. It's how these experiences work together, not just this, this island in the stream, not this archipelago of, of devices. That, to me, is, is the, the immediate response to, well, if you don't like it, then use X. Like, but the problem is, is you're trading one set of nightmares for another. And the, 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 the quote-unquote nightmares that I would be faced with the old Apple, uh, pre-Tim Cook era Apple, I, I could deal with them. I, I could mitigate the shortcomings with relative ease. And it's now become painfully obvious that while Tim Cook's Apple is certainly capable of turning out product, they're not capable of turning out product that is well done. And that is not just speaking to industrial design and hardware, but specifically fit and finish in software. And I realized it's, it's software is in con it's it's a constant iteration, right? You you you're constantly developing, you're constantly making things better, you're constantly improving. That's the nature of technology. It's just that I've been giving Apple since iOS seven to get their act together, and now instead of having to just deal with the software slop which some people just don't see. Eh. You know what? You're blessed. If you don't see this stuff, man, I, I really do wish I was you. Ignorance is bliss. I'm not calling you ignorant. I'm just saying if you don't see something, it's not a problem. But the moment that you see it, you can't unsee it. I documented these things over the years. I'm tired of documenting. I'm tired of... Honestly, I'm tired of talking about it. I am. Because it seems to be that I, I, I'm, I'm fighting an endless battle that... Is, is, is a crusade against uh, uh, nothing. I'm tilting at windmills. I'm out here all alone, just spinning in circles, saying, this is not right. This could be better. I'm saying it because I care, because you deserve a better product. Whether or not you know it, 
You do. I, I, I have absolutely been uh, <laughs> railing against Apple for years, ever since the inception of, of iOS 7. That, that was, I'll never forget that moment either. It was devastating. Devastating. And I'm told every iteration, oh, they'll fix it in software. Oh, and they never do. They never do. So um, I have to establish I'm not a hater. And this is something I have to say because uh, you know, I get accused of being negative, uh, being a hater. Uh, the, the term that I've heard now three times from three different people is that I'm bitching for the sake of bitching. That uh, undermines my position in the same way that it will also undermine yours because my complaints are valid. My opinions are just as valid as yours. This isn't something that you know I, I, I necessarily look to do. Uh, and it's not that the, the, the perceived shortcomings that, that Apple's, uh, you know, pushed down the pike uh, have, have been things that I, I've, I've railed against because they were popular opinion. Uh, for example, I really don't miss the headphone jack all that much. Every so often, sure. But is it is it a, a deal breaker? No, absolutely not. I, I'm not I'm not that use case. Uh, and by and large, I think the marketplace has responded with that. Uh, the camera bump on the back of the phone. I don't stare at the camera. Or the lens. I'm ambivalent, right? I, I, it, it's never bothered me at all. I never felt it detracted from the design. And I'm someone who appreciates a good aesthetic. So it, it's not that, you know, I'm bitching for the sake of bitching, not my word, somebody else's, uh, because I could. Believe you me. If you want me to, I will. Cause I, I could I could do this all day long. I don't want to. I don't I don't want to. I, all I want to do is just talk about Star Wars. That's it. That's all I want to do. That's that's what I would enjoy doing. But this is just it's I don't think this problem's gonna go away. It's just it's bubbling up. And I'm the more I'm seeing, the more agitated I get. Um some say that I'm too picky. I say, you're not picky enough. And the thing is, Apple, under Jobs, solved the problem by giving you a choice that was a good choice. Not so much under the new direction. Not remotely. I'm not talking about their financials. I'm not talking about how many units they've shipped. You know, the, you know, the, the processes are certainly tweaked. They're amazing. But we're talking about the processes for a product that is now, in my estimation, subpar or does not live up to the, the memory of Steve Jobs. Not remotely. Someone tweeted me and said, you know, the design team would have been, the entire design team would have been, would have been fired. Our, this never would have made it out of R&D. I'm specifically talking about the iPhone 10. You never had to be picky enough because the product was good. What I'm telling you is that 10 is a one and not because it doesn't have amazing components in it but because good hardware with crappy software is a bad product can it be improved in software absolutely will it under apple history would suggest absolutely not apple has been uh dethroned as far as i'm concerned with fit and finish in software if you're looking for a good example, look to other platforms. I'm not trying to minimize the the the, uh, the skill that has gone into producing what has been produced. What I'm saying is they have not gone far enough. They're resting on their laurels, and they're 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 able to do what they do now because the competition isn't close yet. Will the competition ever get there? I, I, I don't know. Some people would say it's already there. I completely disagree. So, some have said, and I don't disagree with them, it's just a phone. I can't disagree. The one thing I will say is, 
It's not just a phone. It's your primary computing device. You always have it on you. You're always using it. For most people, it's their default everything. So it's not just a phone. It's an extension of you. And if that extension of you is marred in some capacity or isn't as good as it could be, you owe it to yourself to have a product that is what you deserve. I don't believe the iPhone 10 is what you deserve. I believe Apple's design team phoned it in. Hardware and software. I've felt this way about their software since iOS 7. And quite literally now, on the phone, on an iPhone, they've phoned it in. I gotta be careful. Because I don't want to suggest that they, the, the work that went into it wasn't as good as it could have been. What I'm saying is that it's not up to the standard of Apple. What I knew Apple to be. And I'm not alone in this perspective, in that specific perspective. Even people who have disagreed me, with me about iOS 7 are looking at this, this notch on the iPhone 10 and wondering what Apple's thinking. Um, so, so along those lines, I've seen some apologist excuses. Uh, well, how else was Apple supposed to do this? This is just, I don't know if there's, is there a forum where they're getting their talking points from? Like, it's like, it's a common response. Like, they can't think how Apple could have solved this problem. I tweeted yesterday, I'm like, Samsung figured it out, but apparently chins are evil. I, this is, I, I had no idea. If chins are evil, what do you think obtrusive notches are? So I'm going to I'm going to show you something here. This was uh uh shared if I can get to it um on uh on social and uh let's see if I can pull this up just right. Hopefully the brightness on the iPad is going to work. I'm going to hold it up. So over here on this side, you'll see uh, what Apple uh, has produced, how, how they intend on the software to work. And on the other side, um, and I'll be sure to, I'm sorry that the lighting in here is a little off. Let's see if I can swipe up. Okay, got to remember all my new gestures. Come down again. There we go. That's a little better. Tweeted it out. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, on this side, you'll see how it could have been done. And to me, the difference is stark, and it says everything. Steve Jobs never would have let this pass. This would have been passable. This works. If, if, if honestly, the iPhone X uh, had the screen and, and the software worked in conjunction with the hardware this way, uh, I, I probably would be ready to possibly try one. But as it stands, no way in hell. I could not recommend this to anybody. No way. I don't care what else it comes with. I don't care how amazing they say the screen is. And maybe it is amazing. But here's the thing. There's a notch that you can't escape. It's there. It's ever-present. The software can help address it. But has Apple made that choice? No, for whatever reason. And they're going to possibly change their minds over time. Uh, have they changed their minds up front? Nope. In fact, in uh, developer documentation, it's suggested to uh, basically embrace the notch. That's their word for it. I've got a, a different word for it, and uh, I, I, uh, I'll get to that here in just a second. First, I want to open a, a second tweet, now that i got the brightness set up just right. Uh, so this was tweeted out. That's a, a web page in landscape mode right there. And uh, so uh, you can see that it's flanked with white bars, effectively. Now, if you think that looks good and clean, okay, uh, all right. And it may not be a white color. It depends on uh, the background uh, declaration in CSS for the page, if the web developer uh, did anything with it. But, uh, yeah, so uh, that's what it looks like uh, in landscape. All right, so back to another example here. Yeah. I like shooting my video live to tape. I hate editing video. This is actually an animated GIF of uh, what it's like to scroll in, uh, in, in that mode. 
And so not only are you flanked with a white side here and a white side over there, but uh, the scroll bar for the page actually dips behind the notch. I am literally laughing at Apple. <laughs> it's just... I'm not laughing at the poor folks who are going to get one. I mean, it's just... I'm laughing at Apple. I'm making fun of Apple for their design or lack thereof. <laughs> it's... These, are just, these are just some examples, right? Because, you know, people were concerned about video mode. Oh, yeah, video, right? So the notch shows up in, in, in a zoom uh, or, or a default zoom that can be toggled. See, that's the thing. In video, you can toggle the zoom mode so that the, the notch is basically invisible. As well, it should be. But <laughs> that's not what they put out in their marketing materials. Maybe I should edit this video and edit in like a notch over here, right? Or over here. <laughs> oh, but, 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 <laughs> I would also have to add a bar, right? I don't know if you caught this in the GIF specifically. See that little black bar down there, right? That's not a scroll bar that down there. That's, uh, that's actually a, 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 the, the bar to, to swipe up to get to not notifications, but your task management or to edit, exit out of the app because you got new virtually undiscoverable gestures to memorize. Then after you've memorized it, you still still got to deal with that little... So this is... I, 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 there's got to be a better word for notch because now it's, it's no longer notches. These are perma-turds. That's what they are. It's, it's a turd that is constantly there. In one way, shape, or form, either it's a hardware turd or it's a software turd. These these long, dark, some somewhat thick, somewhat thin. <laughs> How? Where's their designers? Who who's steering this ship? This is the kind of thing that true Apple fans, the fanboys, would make fun of other manufacturers for. This, this, is, this, is, uh, this is what they'd poke fun of uh, uh, you know, for, for, for creating a device that had a questionable uh, user interface and, and user experience. They'd make fun of them. But now, because Apple does it, somehow it's better? No. No. The emperor has no clothes. Apple doesn't care about me. They obviously don't care about you either. I mean, they do as far as getting bills paid are concerned. This is a joke. The iPhone 10 is a joke. I, I don't care about its specs. Specs are irrelevant. Absolutely irrelevant. If you don't have a good experience, you can have the fastest, poorest experience on the planet. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. Have the fastest poorest experience on the planet. The two are not mutually exclusive. Speed isn't everything. Some people don't mind these turds, these perma turds, or at least the perma turd at the top of the screen, which may eventually get mitigated. I, I guarantee Apple's not going to ever reach out to me or listen. I'm a nobody. I admit that. But that doesn't mean that I don't care and that I don't want to see a better product because I want to get a better product. I want them to make a better product for me to get. I don't think there's any harm in that. So landscape mode is a nightmare. That's kind of what it boils down to with, the, with the, an iPhone 10. So if you like landscape mode, uh, good luck with that. I've already seen, and I, I think these are largely, uh, um, I, I don't have it pulled up here, uh, but uh, uh, dummy user experiences to, to simulate what scrolling is like with the, the permaturd. And 
it's a joke. Like, someone's obviously saying this would never work, but the thing is, is some people believe it's serious. And if it's serious, it's still a joke. It's just poor design. It's, 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 it's not symmetrical. It's not aesthetically pleasing. It can't be ignored. Uh, yeah, uh, again, I, uh, uh, I saw one tweet, and I, 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 I've been pushing back on this pretty hard because I, I certainly don't want to be, you know, seen in the camp of, of, of believing this is a good idea. I think this is a nightmare. I think it's an absolute nightmare. Not because it doesn't have the promise of being better. Just address it in software differently. And, and, and all, most of these issues would just disappear. But Apple hasn't figured it out. If they figured it out, that's what we would have seen yesterday. But we didn't. And we probably won't. And are they going to change anything? Probably not. I say that based on experience. Moreover, I get the argument, well, if more people buy it, then they've decided. Like, people will buy anything. Just because more people believe in it doesn't make it good. So I'm not going to try to hold my breath that Apple is going to address the problem they clearly don't see. I, uh, I've been talking about these problems for years, and I, I've been ignored largely. Uh, I know that many people don't believe me. But when I... When I say these things, it's because I believe they matter. I believe, it's not just having a conversation. I believe that I need to say these things. Because if I don't, then I feel that I will have not done everything I possibly could. Right? File a radar. <laughs> I did. Didn't turn out too well. Some people do file radars, and, and they may uh, you know, end up uh, uh, seeing the light of day. Uh, to me, how do you file a radar over these choices that they've made that seem to be irreversible or their their pride um, so strong that they believe that this is the right thing to do. This isn't courage. I, I don't know what this is. Apart from a list that continues. I just don't understand how past R&D, how this, how this ever saw the light of day. Uh, I don't understand how so many tech reviewers are falling over themselves and even making, in my estimation, boneheaded suggestions that you, you would not even want to get the iPhone 8 or the iPhone 8 Plus. I disagree with that wholeheartedly um, because they, they're willing to take... A, 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 they seem to be willing to sacrifice usability for... Bigger screen size, I guess. That doesn't make any sense on any any level. Even with it being a demonstrably better screen, OLED screen, right? Blacks are pure black. And the color, saturation, all oh, the contrast. Uh, uh, you still have a perma turd. One of them said that uh, uh, they said, "Well, I don't really like it, but I'll learn to love it." Wow, Stockholm Syndrome much? Dude. You know what? It is your choice. And if you want to live with these nightmares, be my guest. If you think you can mitigate it, be my guest. You can't. Because it's not possible. But ultimately, it's your choice. I think it's a poor decision. I think it's... Uh, 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 it, 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 in my estimation, very ill-advised. I, I think it's absolutely the wrong direction. I, I think it's 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 um, it's funny. It's funny to me. Apple's it's a joke. This isn't about price. Cost is relative. This is about what Apple was and what it is today. Because it's Apple, though, it's fine. Okay. 
I guess. Doesn't make any sense. To me, it doesn't make any sense, but I'm not a fan of anything but great experiences. I don't care who makes them. I don't. Give me a good experience. Give me something that's going to work. Give me something that's going to benefit my life in, in a, a zillion different ways that I could not otherwise get. I, 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 I disagree with a lot of the so-called experts out there who uh, play with devices. I happen to agree with a great deal of the UI and UX experts out there. This is a disaster. Objectively, this is not balanced. It's not symmetrical. You can't avoid it. It doesn't just melt away. If you like the specs, for the most part, you can get the same stuff in an iPhone 8 or an 8 Plus, for the most part. Not exactly. But again, for some reason, chins, as they call them, are evil. You know what? There are other companies who designed this particular situation better than Apple did. But that's not the Apple I know. It's the Apple I used to know that would trump everybody else. You may be able to mitigate it in one app or another, in one way or another, but you can't eliminate it. Inevitably, it's just, it's there. You can't get rid of it unless it's addressed wholesale in software. Or maybe the idea will get addressed in the next iPhone. Uh, I ain't going to be a guinea pig. Certainly not at that price. I, I'm not on Apple's payroll. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I, I've never really, uh, you know... I never really made the right decisions there um, in terms of uh, saying something and then being accused of blindly hating a company or blindly loving the company. I'm somewhere in the middle. I'm just a, I'm a user. I'm a user advocate. I'm a usability advocate. Uh, I'm looking at some of the points that I have written down and I'm grateful that I was able to, to, to say them already, so I'm skipping over them. Um, to me, it, it, the, the iPhone 10 is anti, uh, antithetical to the memory of Steve Jobs. It is. I mean, I, I thought this was the, the thing, but man. This is, this is not, in my opinion, in my estimation, this is... This never, oh, I swear, no. Not everything I knew about Steve Jobs. Not everything that he he, he provided. Um, his attention to detail, this, they, they haven't had it. And who knows when they will, if they will. Again, I think everybody's gone. Not to say that the people there who aren't, not to say the people there are not doing an amazing job. I'm not taking away from that. I'm just saying that the products are no longer worthy of an Apple brand from the Apple that I once knew. <clears throat> I, I certainly don't believe they have design leadership anywhere. Hardware, maybe. Software, absolutely not. Um, That's that's really that's I've I've said everything I wrote, wrote down, uh, realizing that I, I could say a lot more. I'm sure, and, and I, this is gonna upset people or make them happy. I, you know, I I just gotta say it like it is. I just think the more examples that I see, man, it's just like iOS slop since going back to seven that some people don't see, right? But it's just the incongruent padding and alignment and font issues and layout issues that we're still dealing with because of resolution independence and, and slop, 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 slop. And now it's just getting worse because the hardware's in the mix and it can't, software can't mitigate it if the software's not enabled to mitigate it. I'm certainly not the person Apple should hire to take care of this. As a casual observer, I, I, I can only say, dude, this, look, that's, look, I can point at it. If you start when you start looking at the examples uh, of of issues that may or may not ever be addressed in software, it and you you don't you still don't see the problem. 
you're probably the type of person who had no issue with Windows Millennium Edition, Windows Vista, or Windows 8. Or maybe you did. And, and we happen to not agree on symmetry. I know what uh, symmetrical uh, use, usability is. I know what symmetry is. I'm a fan of symmetry. This is not symmetrical. This is not clean. This is obtrusive. This is the opposite of what good design that I've known it to be is. Uh, you know, so, someone, uh, someone remarked, and that he wouldn't be the first, or she, that, uh, well, I miss the old positive Chris Perillo. You know, I miss the old Apple. So there, okay? We can tit for tat all day long. Consumer electronic experiences, you know, aren't always amazing. Some of them are. And there are exceptions to the rule. But the Apple that I used to, to, to count on, you know, that, that feeling of excitement has been attenuated for some time, but it was just crushing to me. It was crushing. I can't believe, I still can't believe it. And the examples that I see, the, every example I see in my feed pointing out, look, this is how this is going to work. This is how this looks. Horrible alignment and padding and all. I, I simply can't believe it's, it's a, it's a fin, finished, so-called so finished product. I can't believe someone signed off on it. Who needs animated poop emoji video when you've got static poop sitting there all the time at the top or bottom of your screen? The permaturd. <laughs> so if, if you, let's say, miss a, a Chris Perillo who is positive, I've got a solution for you. No, don't become Apple and, and make better products. Um, you can follow Star Wars Radar. I love Star Wars. You want, you want to hear positivity? Star Wars. Star Wars. So, so you can't claim that, that Chris isn't positive. You haven't seen me talk about Star Wars. Or maybe you have seen me talk about Star Wars. There's a topic that, that is happiness. Um, there's a topic I absolutely care about and can talk about all day long. And do want to talk about all day long. So that's why I have Star Wars Radar. Yeah, YouTube just kind of kicked that up. Uh, Twitter's got like 48,000 Star Wars fans on it. And it's it's a fantastic community. I love it. It's it's great. I've got now. I've got the Star Wars radar on on Instagram, on YouTube, on Facebook a page and a group uh, for fellow Star Wars fans. But the the Twitter base, forty eight thousand people. It's pretty amazing. I get more uh, interactivity with the, the Star Wars fans than I ever did from a tech community, ever. Despite what you think you know about me. So if you miss a positive Chris Perillo. Uh, Star Wars Radar, give it a follow. But just expect that it's all, it's, it's going to be about Star Wars stuff. I can't promise to be positive about things that I don't have any reason to be positive about. It's not my job. I'm not a cheerleader. I'm not here to, to, to tell you the decisions that you make are amazing. I'm here to, to, to call it like I see it, to give you my opinion, my perspective, unfiltered. Probably my problem. No, oh, I've got a laundry list of problems. Trust me, people think they know the problem. They they can come up with, you know, all the reasons why I'm a horrible person and that I've done this, that, and the other thing, and the reasons why X, Y, and Z. Trust me, you're never going to tell me something about myself that I don't know, ever. But I can tell you this: tech is not a part of my identity. It's just a phone, right? It's just technology. It's definitely not a religion. Doesn't mean that uh, I don't want something better for me and for you, even if you don't see it. And it certainly is not bitching for the sake of bitching. Never has been, never will be. So if you don't mind, I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I knew it was going to be long. Uh, happy you tuned in this deeply. Um, I just want to know I'm not the only one. I've heard all the, the counter, quote-unquote, counter-arguments that are tenuous at best. Uh, I just want to know I'm not alone in, in the belief that this is just the wrong direction for, for the iPhone's future, specifically in relation to how they address the notch. I don't want to 
and talk about the specs. Uh, so stay tuned. I will be doing more iPhone videos, at least in the in the coming weeks. Stay tuned for that decision. <laughs> I guarantee I will not be getting an iPhone 10. Uh, and maybe other smartphones as well. I love you. I appreciate you. And may the force be with you.